Animals and plants are composed of numerous cells organized into different functional types. Each cell has thousands of proteins acting as catalysts. Those proteins are called enzymes. Not all catalysts are proteins. Some are also small molecules of RNA. Similar to what we have seen in the organic chemistry part, catalysts accelerate the rates of chemical reactions but are not part of the product and do not undergo any change. Enzymes differ from ordinary chemical catalysts in several important aspects. The actions catalyzed by enzymes are usually 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 12 times greater than those without the use of enzymes. Efficient chemical catalysis often requires elevated temperatures and pressures as well as extremes of pH. Enzymes reactions occur at mild conditions, that is, temperatures below 100 degrees, atmospheric pressure, and the pH is nearly neutral. Different than the catalysts used in the chemistry lab, biological catalysts are specific to recognize reactants they act upon and they, they rarely have side products. Enzymes increase the rates of chemical reactions by lowering the free energy barrier that separates the reactants and products. In the language of enzymes, those reactants are called substrates. The last aspect that differentiates between regular catalysts and enzymes is the capacity for enzymes of regulation, that is, other substances different than the substrates can determine if an enzyme is going to be on or off. In another video, we are going to discuss how an enzyme can operate at an optimum pH and at an optimum temperature. We can summarize the basic concepts of enzymes with the following example. We have here the disaccharide of maltose, which is made out of two glucoses with alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond. This is a protein that has a small side called the active side, where the molecule of maltose, a disaccharide, can bind. They are going to form a complex that will be lowering the activation energy, and as a product, we will obtain two glucoses. The rate of the reaction of hydrolysis of maltose is a lot higher by the use of an enzyme than if it is in the chemistry lab. The conditions are mild conditions because this is at room temperature and at neutral pH, rather than the use of harsh conditions such as heat or high pH. Now, this reaction is very specific because maltose is the only substrate for maltase. This will be the reaction without the use of an enzyme where the reactant substrate maltose will be converted into two glucoses without the use of enzyme and in the second case is when the activation energy is lowered with the use of enzyme. Enzymes increase the rates of chemical reactions by decreasing the energy of the transition state, that is, the barrier that needs to be overcome to transform substrates to products is decreased. In the process, there is a formation of a complex between the enzyme and the substrate, which is called the ES complex. A great majority of enzymes are water-soluble globular proteins. The active site of an enzyme is a small portion of a polypeptide with some groups that will be in interaction with the substrate where the chemical reaction takes place. 
the active site will have a specific shape and specific groups to interact with such substrate. The amino acid side chains lining up the active sites are called catalytic groups. Those amino acids can form hydrogen bonds, salt bridges, or hydrophobic interactions with the substrates. The binding site of an enzyme possesses two independent structural characteristics. One part provides the amino acids for the catalysis of the reaction, and another part provides the amino acids to hold the substrates. Catalytic groups are not the only contributor to the catalysis. The interaction between substrate and enzyme in the complex is mediated by the same forces that stabilize protein structure, which includes hydrogen bonds, hydrophobic interactions, salt bridges, and van der Waals interactions. Only a small number of amino acids are used in the creation of an active site. The amino acids found on the cleft can be found in any position in the primary structure of the enzyme. For example, amino acid number 62, 63, 101, and 108 are far apart on the primary structure but in very close proximity in three dimensions. That, that is, the tertiary structure. Many active sites of enzymes have the presence of cofactors for activity. Cofactors can be divided into two groups. The cofactor can be a metal with a plus charge, such as magnesium 2 plus, zinc 2 plus, copper 2 plus, iron 2 plus, iron 3 plus, or a small organic molecule. If the cofactor is a small organic molecule, it is called a coenzyme. An enzyme without the cofactor is called an apoenzyme, and this apoenzyme has not catalytic activity. It will not accelerate the rate of a reaction. An enzyme with its cofactor or apoenzyme with its cofactor is called a hollow enzyme. The cofactor can be loosely bound or tightly bound. When the cofactor makes a covalent bond with the enzyme, it's called a prosthetic group. We have seen prosthetic group in hemoglobin and myoglobin. The heme was making a covalent bond with the protein was also a prosthetic group. We need to revisit the most important properties of enzymes, catalytic power and specificity. Reactions catalyzed by enzymes are at least one million times faster than those that are without the enzymes. Even a simple reaction as the hydration of carbon dioxide in the blood requires the presence of an enzyme, and this reaction is 10 to the 7 times faster than without the enzyme. Proteases are enzymes that cleave peptide bonds. Even though the hydrolysis of a peptide bond is thermodynamically favored, this hydrolysis reaction is extremely slow. It will take years to cleave a peptide bond of a protein in the absence of an enzyme. The two resonance structures of the peptide bond give a double bond character between carbon nitrogen and carbon oxygen. At the same time, this gives a high stability that slows down the rate of hydrolysis of the peptide bond. In the presence of an enzyme, a reaction that can take place in years will take place in minutes or in seconds. 
Enzymes are exclusive or specific to their substrates they will bind in their active sites. In our example, we say maltase was the enzyme binding maltose to hydrolyze maltose to produce two glucoses. Maltase is exclusive to maltose and it will not hydrolyze lactose. Lactase, which is the enzyme that does the hydrolysis of lactose, will not hydrolyze maltose. It is important the recognition of what is the glycosidic bond in order to get the hydrolysis. This is a good example of the specificity of the active sites of enzymes. We have two different enzymes, trypsin and thrombin. These are both proteases. The binding site of the enzyme contains a carboxylate group in an aspartate and a catalytic triad, those amino acids in charge of the hydrolysis, serine, histidine, aspartate. There will be the formation of a salt bridge between the carboxylate group and the positively charged amino acid lysine or arginine. Both enzymes are very similar on what hydrolysis takes place and also in what is the interaction between the binding site and the substrate. However, thrombin is more specific because will only hydrolyze when the arginine amino acid is neighbored to the glycine amino acid, which is recognized as a small amino acid. Another good example to explain the specificity of enzymes is the protease chymotrypsin. This enzyme also contains the catalytic triad of a serine amino acid, histidine, and aspartate. The catalytic groups will react with the peptide bond, but in this case, the binding site has hydrophobic amino acids that are making hydrophobic interaction with the side chain of the polypeptide to be hydrolyzed. The products are two different polypeptides. Carboxypeptidase is another protease. It hydrolyzes peptide bonds. Its binding side also has a hydrophobic pocket. However, it will only bind the hydrophobic amino acid side chain right next to the carboxylic acid terminal of the polypeptide. Active sites of enzymes are chiral surfaces. They will recognize one enantiomer and not the other.